you buy the roller rack, you just need Hello, oh, I got to be a little loud this evening. Hello, darling. I'm Martin. Hello, darling. There you go. We're so thankful that everybody's here this evening and praise the Lord for the rain that he sent us. Um, we got an inch. I know that it would vary for all over the place. Um, some places I think got less, and I'm just praising God for the inch that we got. And um, if we'd have got a two-tenths, I'd praise God for that, too, because every little bit... Every little bit counts, <clears throat> and every little bit waters his world. Um, we're glad y'all are here, and uh, we'll see if we can get started to say that. Oh, I'm just an old junk boy. I'm gonna be a diamond someday. I'm gonna grow and glow. Well, I'm so blue to a perfect. Gonna smile on everybody's face. I'll just ask uh, Eddie about his trip home from work today, and uh, you'll get a little humor out of it, I guarantee you. I did, um, and I just don't think that's coincidence. I think God needed us to laugh, so uh, we did. Anyway, I want to do this 
song here, and um, I'm going to hope I remember what key I need to do it in. You know, Jesus has given his all for us, and he, he gave everything, his life, he felt every pain we ever felt, he, wow, and that's just, he felt every pain that everybody in this whole wide world has felt, he suffered every, went through every temptation. You know, we think we got it bad um, when our hearts uh, want to go the wrong way. The devil threw his whole arsenal at Jesus. Everything he had. Everything he had. We only hear of the three things right there in the, in the desert. But he threw everything he had to make Jesus fall, and Jesus didn't. And um, thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for not. When I think how Jesus died and for my sins was crucified for oh, love such as this I just can't comprehend when I think how he must feel who suffered through that
to move along in James. And, uh, we're about part nine, we're over halfway of this series, uh, this series and all. And, and today's topic is choosing wisely. How many of y'all remember the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Years ago, I was going way back. I looked back how long ago it's been since we've done this. I think that was an old movie when we did this series the first time. So, but anyway, if you remember, there was a commercial going on at that time. And I don't know who was putting it out, whether it was Coke or Pepsi, but it was tied to the Indiana Jones movie and had him in it. And they're trying to get him to choose, right, between Coke and, and Pepsi. And, you know, and, and there was a right choice, no really right or wrong choice. It was a choice of personal preference, right? Isn't that what it comes down to? If you're drinking Coke or if you're drinking Pepsi, doesn't that come down to just a personal preference? Some like it all. And it's amazing to me is because when I grew up, I loved Pepsi. Now I'd rather drink a Coke. So I guess our taste buds change or, 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 or whatever. But we all have that personal preference. And our cho those choices are based on our per own personal wisdom. And, and, and it's, just, it's a personal choice. And we make them all the time. We're going to shop. Some people like HEV. Some people like Kroger. Right? Personal choice. Both of them sell milk. You know what I mean? So, but it's, you know, some people like Kroger milk more than HEV milk or whatever. But it's all about your personal choices. We do. And a lot of times, the things are based on convenience. You know, like taste or our taste of food, our clothing, our trucks. And a lot of it comes from how and where we were raised. You believe that? You agree with that? All right. How many people like Hunt's ketchup versus, what's the other? Heinz. There's people that won't eat one, but eat the other. You know, uh, but there's people that choose, you know, this kind of bread over that kind of bread. I worked at a bakery when I was a young man. My senior in high school, I work all night, we load trucks, and I go to school all day. Okay? So, <clears throat> I want to tell you something. The bakery makes bread. Somebody else makes the bags and goes in. All they did when they changed bread was they stopped the conveyor, they took these big racks of bags off and hooked them over here, put these racks of bags on and hooked them over here and hit the start button. Okay, now they might say that this one has more, this in it and this one's made in that form, but I'm going to tell you what, it, it had to be a choice done way before we got it. But people have the preferable choices. And a lot of it has to do with the way we're growing up. If you're fed Heinz ketchup, you're like, there's a lot of people like Miracle Whip. Did I do that out loud? I, I thought it was mayonnaise until I was 21 years old. I didn't, really <laughs> didn't even know it wasn't mayonnaise. Yeah. You know, you know. But, but there again, if you grew up eating Miracle Whip, it's the right normal thing to do, and it'll taste better to you than mayonnaise. And if you grew up eating mayonnaise, and there's some people that eat craft mayonnaise and some people that eat Helms. Because they like crap any better. But it's all been about how we were brought up in and the environment in which we were brought up in. You know, it's all a part of personal like or dislike. Right? You agree with that? So we have our, that <clears throat> our personal choices, whether we like it or we dislike it. Based on our own personal opinion, our own wisdom. I've been in some, there's been some heated discussions over like vets. I use this vet, you use that. My thing is that town body, so we all don't go to the same dentist. You know what I mean? We all use the same vet, we don't use the same horseshoe, or, you know, but there's people who will tell you that guy stinks and he's no good, but da, 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 da. you know, it's like horseshoe. I've never ever in my whole entire life heard a farrier praise another farrier. Right. Uh, I've never heard that. You know, they don't intentionally talk them down, but if a name comes up, they're not beyond their own opinion. Of, of, of that person. And there again, we use it because of our own. I guess what I'm trying to say is we've discovered the one thing that suits our needs and our desires better than the other. You agree with that? Yes. That's it. We figure this person fits me better. I get along better with that person. You know, some people go to a doctor because they're the cheapest. Some go because of their bedside manner. They'd rather pay a little more and, and just be around someone's nice personality. I really don't care. All I need you to do is fix what's broken. Okay? I don't know. Uh, but so many people have this. So, we base our decisions on that. 
Well, we've come to the conclusion that suits us and our needs and our desires better than anything. So as we continue, continue studying James, we're going to go back and touch on a topic we talked about earlier. James knows how we struggle with this. God knows that we struggle with this all the time. So James touches on it again, and I think we need to touch on it again, but he comes at it from a little different angle. He, he, he brings it in. So in James chapter 3, we'll start in verse 13. And like I said, earlier in the study we talked about this. James had mentioned it. But this kind of goes from a little different angle. And it's, mine is called, True Wisdom Comes From God. He says, If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover it up with the truth, with the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there... <clears throat> There you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So, first thing we see is he's talking about knowledge again. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people get knowledge and wisdom confused. Do you, understand, do you believe that there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom? Someone can have a lot of knowledge and still lack wisdom. I've talked about it before. You've ever heard this, book smart? That someone's book smart? They can read a book and go back and tell you what page to go to. Uh, exactly what it said, word for word. Uh, spiritually, it's the same way. And we have to watch out for this. Spiritually, we can get caught in the same trap. I've known a lot of people that's mastered the art of memorizing Scripture. They can quote chapter and verse better than Billy Graham. They have learned to do that. When it comes to the problem is, is knowing the word and taking it and applying it to their life. They have the knowledge. You know what? I know people. You ever see a grown person touch something that they know is hot? Matter of fact, uh, who was it that did that? Here's your sign. Jeff Foxworth. Was it Jeff Foxworth? Where he talked about the guy took a car for a test drive, got out and grabbed the tailpipe. Said, Dang, that's hot. You know what I mean? <clears throat> he had the knowledge. He knew it was hot. He wasn't very wise because he grabbed a hold of it. So James says that we need to be bona, use bona fide wisdom in our lives. We need to make choices based on God's word <coughs> excuse me, and not our personal likes and dislikes. It's hard to do sometimes. You know, the, the, the Bible sometimes can get right in the middle of the world's way. And if we don't watch it, we can be caught up in it. But there is good worldly wisdom. Confused yet? Huh? There is good worldly wisdom. Okay, the world says that it's a bad idea to go into a bad neighborhood late at night and walk up to an ATM to get money out. You agree with that? The world says that that's a bad the world says it's a bad idea to walk into a bank with a ski mask on. Even if it's cold outside, right? So, that's good worldly wisdom. Once again, good worldly wisdom. But let me look at it, what James is really trying to tell us. He says, wisdom that affects our spiritual life. When the world says, get what you can, fight for yourself, it's all about you. George, uh, James is warning us that the world can slip into our lives under the cover of godly, good instruction, good worldly instruction. And it'll come in the form of selfish ambition and envy. What he's trying to say is, we'll start making decisions based on what we want and where we want to go, where we want to be, what we want to get out of life, what we see as ambition. 
I'm not saying wanting to get ahead is wrong. I'm saying that when it starts to be the driving factor in your life, then you're going to start following worldly things and you're going to shortcut God's word. And that's what he's trying to warn us about. He says, this is a great, I, I, I read this and I wish I could take credit for it. Applying worldly wisdom to our spiritual lives is a blueprint for disaster. Why would you say that would be? Because our spiritual lives were designed one way and the world is designed the other. Our spiritual life teaches us to be focused on God, His wants, His needs, His desires, what He has for us. The worldly thing says, let's focus on you. So they have two different objectives. So there's no way that the good will come out of one when it comes to taking worldly stuff and trying to apply it. Look at verse 16. What did James say in verse 16? For whenever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, you always find disorder and evil of every kind. When people start being jealous of other people, then decisions start getting made. Maybe we treat them harshly. Maybe uh, we make decisions. And, when we start envying people, maybe we start shortcutting uh, what God's Word is. So James is saying we need to take this wisdom we need to gain wisdom from God's Word, not just knowledge. We need to understand what God is trying to say to us, and in our wisdom make the choice. It's like telling a kid, how many of y'all like to burn candles in your house? You ever burn candles in your house when you had little kids around? Do you ever tell them what? Don't touch, right? Talk. How many of y'all have ever touched it? Okay, so they had the knowledge to know it was hot, but once they figured out from the wisdom... That it was hot, you didn't have to worry about them touching it anymore. If you did, well, then, you know, that's a different thing. You know, they keep burning themselves over and over, we got a whole different set of problems. You know, it's like an Alexa, don't stick your finger in there. I remember a time sitting in my living room when my daughter was little and my mom was there and she was over there playing by a socket. And she goes, son, don't let her touch that. So I said, Jennifer, don't touch that. It will shock you and it will hurt. She looked right at me and touched it. Didn't shock her. So now she's going on this worldly idea. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Guess what? About the third time she touched it, it gave her a little zinc. So then, now she had all the knowledge, and guess what she put with it? The wisdom. The understanding of going through it. And she said, so how do we apply that in our lives? How many times have God told us, be careful, don't do this, watch this, over. and we have, we know, and they know that we really shouldn't, but we think maybe it won't happen to us, it'll be okay. And then it goes south. So most of the time, when we figure that out, we don't do it over and over and over again. Because, you know, now we're worrying on not being smart, we're worrying on the other So James says that we cannot take worldly stuff and connect it. And in here we find, he talks about seven things. He talks about purity, peace, loving, gentleness, a willingness to yield, mercy, no favoritism, no impartiality, and sincerity. So we'll break them down. Purity. No one is pure. But it says here that the wisdom, right? you know what it talks about there? But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. I'm not talking about you here. Talk about God's wisdom. You know what? My daughter really found out how wise I was when she built that electricity. Yeah. You ever have a kid tell you times are different? You don't understand, Dad. We don't ride horses, but we smell But I will tell you this. Speed will get you a ticket any way you want to look at it. Yeah. So you had the knowledge just didn't have the smarts. Yeah, what's that uh, the, the, the guy says? Oh, you have the right to remain silent, but you just didn't have the know-how. You, know, you had the wisdom. You was better not to smart off to that cop. You just couldn't help yourself. So then you had the proof that it would have been better to keep your mouth shut. So as we go through life and as we learn from God and as we see God's word applied and we start to realize this knowledge is right, this knowledge is correct, we start to learn. So we understand that God's knowledge that he gives us is pure, straight, 
It's not corrupted by the world. There's no selfish ambition in it for God. It's all about what's best for us. So, it's pure. And this knowledge is peaceful. There are no one's people like to tell you how smart they are. Show up this morning. You've got all them letters behind their name. And they go around and they brag about how smart they are. Look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. And when we do that, we have to be careful. Is that the kind of peace that he's talking about here, though? It, it, the world gives us this image of peace, of setting out on the porch in the country and watching the ducks land on the pond, and we get to see the, the elk grazing out there. We're just relaxed and kind of everything is peaceful. That's not what he says. God's knowledge is peaceful. Is the peace that comes in all circumstances at all times, and it's in inner peace. What it comes from is we know that God's wisdom is pure. We can have peace at what he says will come to happen. We can, it, it should not aggravate or irritate us in a way because God has proven ourselves that his word is faithful, his word is pure, his word is true and in that we have the peace of knowing that in all circumstances that God's knowledge is right and looking for our, out for our best interest. The next thing says gentle at all times. We have a tendency in the cowboy world to equate gentleness in the cowboy world. You know, gentleness is weakness. But I'm going to tell you what, the older I get, the gentle, I like the gentler the cow, the better I like. You know that? That's wisdom. That comes from getting kicked and horned and smacked around by all the ones that weren't thinking I was a tough guy. I found this out years and years ago. I probably about all oh, my late twenties. Horse stepped on my foot and I turned around and punched him right in the head. And broke three bones in my hand. <laughs> know what he did? Nothing. So I had wisdom from then on. Get a stick. Yeah. Don't use your hand. But it says in here that wisdom doesn't make us weak. That's what the world wants us to think. Gentleness doesn't mean that we're weak. It means that we can deal with each other in love and consideration. That's what it means. That we can be gentle people. Don't always have to be harsh. You know, the Bible's all full of, of, of what kind words can do and how kind words can lift up and how kind words can encourage. You know, how hard discouraging words are and harsh words are. God, we're saying that God's wisdom in us should create gentleness in us. One, we know it's true. Right? That gives us peace inside that we know it's true and we're confident. Why do we need to be angry when we're sharing? Why do we need to be boasters? Why do we need to be, oh, you're going to hell, God. your church don't know this. You need to come to our church. We get it that way. It says well, we should be gentle all the time, especially inside the brotherhood, inside the fellowship, inside the family. We should be able to understand and be able to accept the faults and opinions of others. Oh, man. I kind of went out the window here lately and accepted the opinions of others. If you don't agree with me, you're against me. I don't care how long we've been friends. Just look at this whole COVID thing. Say it over and over and over. Just say, hey, I got a text today. Do y'all know they got COVID insurance out now? I want to know if I want to buy COVID insurance. I say, now nah, you got some. COVID that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in God's wisdom, he brings it to us gently. He's straightforward. Because what drives God to tell us what to do and how to watch out for this pothole, I had this conversation with the guy today. If you're going down the road and somebody knows the road, they'll tell you, hey, look, when you get past the big oak, you need to hug the right because there's a bunch of big holes on the left-hand side. So now, if you're a bobo and you just want to fly down the road down on the right-hand side and hit all the holes, you go, you know what, my buddy was right. And now i got to get my front end of life. But you take that guy's advice because you know him and he's a trusted friend and you understand and know what you do, you drive down that side of the road. God is gentle in what he tells us. He's trying to tell us 
what he wants us to know so that we don't hit the potholes. She's trying to avoid all that. He doesn't yell and holler at us, hey, Bobo. We'll hear the I love him. This is like one of my favorites since I was going back over because I remember how excited I talked about her. Yielding. <laughs> willing to yield to others. That's another concept that's outdated, isn't it? Yeah, it's my way or the highway. It's all about me. Yielding to the will of others? Why do I care what he wants? Why in the world would I go out and care about that? You know, it's, it's like two trucks on a one lane bridge that get up there at the same time, and neither one of them is going to move. I ain't moving either. I ain't moving either. I'm late. So am I. Now you're both even later. You got a line of traffic behind each of you. Now everybody's late. I ain't moving. He can move. We get that way in this world. We get stubborn where we butt heads and we butt heads. And you know what? It's over stupid stuff. If you just let the guy cross you, you'd have been on your way 10 minutes ago. Right? But now, eh, he ain't getting one over on me. Then again, what's that point back to? What did James talk about earlier? Selfish ambition. It's all about me. Me being first. Me getting across the bridge. It's all about what I want. So this willingness to give in to someone else, especially over stuff that doesn't even matter. I mean, it's not going to affect your life one way or the other, but it does when you're bullheaded. Like I said, now you're both late. And everybody behind you on each side is late. It, has, it gets all blown out of your proportion. Next thing you know, the two guys are standing in the middle of the bridge fist fighting. Nothing good comes out of it. Where if one of them just said, no, go ahead. Stand there, you wait 10 seconds, he drives across the bridge, you drive across the bridge, life is fine. We've got to be willing, James says, to take this knowledge and use it, and we start being willing to think of others first and let them go. Remember, we talk about humility in the Catholic Church all the time. What does humility mean? Others before self. Only way we can come before God is humbly come before God. And we're willing to put God before us. Full of mercy. Uh, show no mercy. That's another weakness, isn't it? Show no mercy. Oh, man. I take no prisoners and show no mercy. Mercy is the key if we ever want to live a truly bona fide life. The lack of it shows the opposite. And God's wisdom shows us nothing but mercy. Grace, forgiveness, everything that we get from God is merciful. Because I tell you what, there's no one in this room, there's no one in my voice deserves anything from God. What we deserve, what we should get, He pours out His mercy on us. Instead, He gives us this thing called grace. Mercy. Is something that we definitely don't deserve. Grace is even something that we don't deserve. Mercy is holding back from us everything we do deserve. It's such a key to our godly living. The Bible shows us over and over and over. It says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And we didn't deserve it, but God showed us mercy. The world says, give only what they deserve. You only give to others what they deserve. Well, I'm sure glad that God's wisdom is different than that. Because God's wisdom says, give them even if they don't deserve. I will show them mercy even if they're not deserving of the mercy. The Bible teaches us then that we should give what we've been given. That it should be something that we truly give back to that which we've been given. God has showed us so we should pass on mercy. Good deeds. What do you love your good deeds will get you there? Sorry. It don't. So 
how does God's wisdom and good deeds go together? The wisdom of God shows us that we need to be willing to what? Be considerate of others. Good deed. That we should show mercy to others. Good deed. That we should have grace for all people. Good deed. Everything that we just talked about is all about good deeds. The wisdom of God should produce those in us. That's what James says. If we follow these, these things coming through, and we realize the, the peace that comes from it, the purity of God's words, so that they should produce in us good deeds. Putting our actions, our words into action. Not being able to be one of the people that know all the knowledge and have all the head knowledge and quote all the verses. The person that can go out there and get dirty. The person that can go in there and jump in and make a hand and, and show the mercy and the grace that God has shown them. And the other thing when it comes to that, and I love this part here, it says no favoritism. We talked about that last week. There's no place for racism, for uh, prejudice in God's family. He doesn't want it. It comes from our own heart. It shouldn't be there. I used to joke with my kids all the time. One of them would come to me and say, well, you let her do that or you let him do that. And I would tell them, well, that's because I love them more than you. <laughs> no favoritism. God would never say that. Because you know what God said? I love every one of you the same. My son died for every one of you the same. It's my desire that all should come. It's my desire that you all should know the glory of salvation. It's my desire that you all should be in No matter who you are or what you've done. That's what God's wisdom gives us. The idea that that person is invaluable to God is I am. That's what comes in God's wisdom. And sincerity. The last thing we talk about. Sincerity is a sign that we have taken the love we've been given, the grace we've been given, and we've Put it all together and we sincerely, sincerely care about others. Sincerely care. We're not just doing it so people can see. We're not just doing it for a bunch of show. We're doing it because we sincerely want to fulfill the will of God in our lives. We know that God wants it. And we are sincere in our giving back, in our showing the grace, showing our forgiveness. Looking past other people's faults. We see here in verse 18, we've come back around full circle. Verse 18 says, And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. We get right back up to the first part of the list. We actually go back to a common teaching of God's Word. Living at peace with others. Living at peace with the world and living at peace with God and planting seeds of peace. Jesus, James said to reap a harvest of righteousness should be our goal. How many of y'all are planting a garden and not expecting to grow anything? That's like me. I, I can kill a wax plant. All I do is till the ground and do what I'm told. I don't know. I don't grow the garden, but I love to eat the vegetables. But if we want to reap a harvest of righteousness, staying in right connection with God, we not got godly wisdom given to us to show us how that that will happen. And how we can produce the good deed. How we can have this peace. God has showed us everything we need. And this is what he said. I started off with that Pepsi commercial, correct? They want you to choose. That's why I call it the sermon, the choice is yours. We get to choose every day. We get to make the choice. Many times a day, we get to make the choice. Handle it with God's wisdom or the world's wisdom. And the Bible says, you choose. Me personally, my friends, I hope and pray that you choose wisely. Father, we just thank you and pray to you as we read in James and, and we talked about we can get all this knowledge of you and, and all this book after book after book and scripture after scripture after scripture. 
but what you desire in us is the wisdom that we can gain from a closeness in our relationship with you. That we can dig into the word and see the things that need to be produced in us. The wisdom tells us where to go, where not to go. To follow your word, not the world. That we are to live in this world, but not be of this world. You showed us that your word is pure and it brings peace. That we should be full of forgiveness and not seek our own. That we should humbly come before you and seek out the will of others. That we be willing to, to sacrifice. It's not important who gets across the bridge. So, Father, I pray that we would take these words and we would take this wisdom that you've given and we would take this knowledge and we would turn it into your wisdom that we would start to make it a way of life, that we would live out the things that you've told us. And if we know about them, let us do them. And, Father, as we do them, you promise, as your word always is, it gives us the promise that we get to produce a right relationship with you, that we get to live in make you pleased that we're your child. And in that, Father, I'll bring joy to our hearts. So, Father, let us use your wisdom. Let us not just have knowledge, but let us seek out to live these things out, these steps, each and every day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm all about the um, choosing part. You know, it took me a long time to grasp what free will was and you know how God knew everything yet we still have free will and I, I did finally grasp it that God gives me a choice for every action that I do for every reaction that I make and um, I, I was talking to a, a person the other day and I was telling them that you know even regardless of I, I was blind, so I had I had a lot of choices. I was blind since I was a year old. I had a lot of choices I could make. I could have a good attitude. I could have a bad attitude. I could decide to work, or I could decide to live um, on the government dime. I could decide to be productive and happy, or I could decide to um, throw myself a pity party and be the only one that was there. So, um, you know, we, we all make those choices each and every day. Um, I don't say that I make the right choice every day, but I pray that the Lord would give me the wisdom to make better choices every day and with the people that I speak with. So um, I just, uh, that choice is just such an incredible thing. He lay there in the darkness all alone and lost all prepared to face the bitter they left him there in pieces, nailed him to the cross. They knew his heart would never beat again. Then love rolled away the stone. And he rose from the ashes where he lay. His heavenly father had come to take him home. And love.
Y'all that might still be still watching, if you're not sitting in here, you just don't know what you're missing. And I pray that everybody would have a good week and a safe week. And I hope to see y'all again on Sunday, the day we celebrate in the day that we know Jesus rose out of the grave and he conquered death for us. So y'all be safe. Have a good night. Keep praying for rain. And um, remember there's more grace in Jesus than there is sin in us.